I know that that's a stretch on what's actually written in the code. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but we <clears throat> do already have existing electricity on the property. We do already have town water. And I emailed um, Sherry the documents that I had that showed that I did actually pay the entrance fee back in 83 for sewer. Long story why that never happened, but um, no one could ever tell me where the stub was. The plans for that section of the street hmm. were, were yeah. missing. Hmm. Okay. Um, re most recently when the sewer main was relined, hmm. I had an opportunity to get a video of the inside of the sewer main and was able to verify that there was actually no stub for that piece of property. So we do have to go all the way to the main to connect to it. Okay. So at the time that I paid the entrance fee, it was an economic thing that I wasn't able to actually hook up to it. But I have most of the pipe that I already need to do it. We've talked with a contractor who is willing to do it for us. And when we're getting ready to do that, we'd, we'd definitely be talking to whoever we need to to get get that connected so okay. that would be our first priority would be to get sewer connected so that we could do that but living in a camper on that property would save us at least 50 percent of our housing costs for the next three years so that we could focus on turning the property into a viable residence and actually get a house that's going to be worth more in the end okay <clears throat> hey, any comments uh no. Well, a, a Mr. Mr. Chair, I, yeah. I wouldn't like to take act, action on this tonight mm -hmm. because I, I think it's a big step. Yep. Um, and it'd be nice to get notice out to the community that the, that it that it's occurring. Right. Um, <clears throat> I would say, without saying how I would vote, because I I do have an opinion. Um, I don't think that's important right now. I think the process is important. Mm -hmm. I would say. Um, for me to consider to come to a f potentially favorable condition, I would need to know. I would I would have to have um, specific uh, a specific timeline, right? Um, about knowing when the building would be demolished, about when you know when at at you know at points um, when thing to be could be done. Um, then I would want to to write that up. Into a uh, a document, yeah, like an order of conditions kind of thing. Sort of. Okay, um, that that we would get approval um, from town council. Mm -hmm. my, my concern is that you sell to tell somebody that they could say they're in violation of our zoning bylaws, um, and all of a sudden goes three years. And I'm not saying what happened to you, Danny, but we well, have to I look understand. at everybody. And all of a sudden, um, nothing happens, and then it's like, well, we've been here for three years. How can you tell us to leave? This is our home. Right. Right. So I, I would just see want to know if we could make something to ask town council if there's something that we could do. Yeah, that makes sense. You know? Oh, that makes sense. I mean that's I mean that was one of the reasons why Absolutely. I I brought it up and I and I emailed Jerry about that was that I knew that we missed the agenda and I wasn't expecting a decision to be made today, but we wanted to start the At discussion. least get it out right and get it started. Start the discussion and find out if it's a viable option because we're currently right now in the planning stages of what we can do and what we can't do. Right. It's a good and time to This know. is gonna make a big difference on what we can do yep. is whether or not the board would allow us to, to be there for three years. And I think you bring up a good point about the process too. Just in fairness to everybody involved, you know, you, us, the town, you know. I think the house is going much better there than what's presently there. I would agree. Yep. Um, I would agree with that. But at the, at the same time, we have to make sure that there's a that there's a process in place and right. we can work the process through. Yeah, it makes sense, and especially going forward, if, if this Absolutely. issue ever comes up again, you know, we need to yeah. have everything taken. Well, care. it does. It is. <clears throat> not conforming to what's in the bylaws and yeah. I certainly wouldn't want the town to set a precedent that could come back to right. haunt the town later. Exactly. I mean, That's we're in a, a little bit of a unique situation based on what's there. Yeah. We're not starting with an empty lot. We're not right. starting with an existing home that's been destroyed. We're starting with a non-conforming building that really doesn't fit anymore with right. what's on the rest of the street. Right. 
yeah. and we want to eliminate that. So it's it's kind of an odd situation. Yeah. No, it makes sense. We can do our homework and everything on it. And, yeah. I would just, yeah. if I could, Mr. Chair, just mm -hmm. add that this board in particular has historically taken exceptions in general, exceptions uh, with with um, some pause. We try to rule by you know, policy and procedure. I think that's good governing. I think the board's acted in that way historically over the last 15 plus years. Mm -hmm. So I, I appreciate your patience with it. And, and frankly, the approach, I think the end makes the means toward the end, you know, something we can continue talking about. Well, it's, that's why we went to the ZBA yep. first because the building <clears throat> inspector was not clear. Yeah. He wasn't, he, I shouldn't say, he wasn't clear, but he was unsure. Sure, right, right. So we filed the application with the ZBA, and then after they reviewed it, realized that we didn't need a special permit. Yep. So. Here we are. Here, here we are. are. Yep. We're, we're at the next step. <laughs> okay, all right. So if you can um, contact our council on this and everything, yeah, and then we can take a look, and then we'll um, make a decision in our next meeting, I think, probably. Okay. Do you as long as we need, have all our info by then. Do you need us to present any more information? Um, or? I don't think so at the moment, but if we do... Do you want the draft sure. timeline for our council? Or? That would be helpful. Yeah, that yeah. would be good. Put yeah, the other timeline. Draft timeline. Yeah. That could be useful. From us? Yes. Yeah, what is that? Yeah. Just to like... Pick a starting date. What does it look like? When's the finished date? Right. Okay. When does it... When did, when does if, if an exception is granted, when does it close? Okay. Because that would be a useful piece for us to help us make our decision. Okay. So, so yeah. think of it this way, Danny. So think of it like uh, like if you've got a, a construction construction loan from the bank, they'll say, okay, you get 10% when the foundation, 15% right. uh, when the house is, you know, um, weather tight. Think of it kind of as the same thing. It's like, so areas is okay. So we'd, we'd have to know, like, put in, put in um, things that we wouldn't, you know, like, Building demolished, building demolished by whatever the date, you know, pick a date, mm -hmm. then whatever the steps are in your process. I just sort of address that in that email, but I can make it more definitive than yeah, that. Absolutely. Just like some yeah. concise yeah. bullet points. Yeah, a little bit yeah. more of a definitive yeah. schedule. Does that yeah. makes sense. Okay. Sure. Something a lawyer might like, you know. It'd <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. be too long. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Bringing a box of paper. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, okay. that'd be good. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks. Appreciate it. And you'd like us to have that for the next meeting? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or as soon as you can get it in. It's okay. certainly because um, the, our council may need it before well, then yeah. if they, if she's able to get in contact with them. So as soon as you can. You want me to email it to you? Yeah, great. email is okay. fast. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks great. so much. Right. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks. Right. Thank you, guys. I see no George yet. What? Unusual. So. Hey. Yeah. Come on, Sarah. To, here to discuss our Community Pathways Committee Conservation Restrictions Requirement Park Grant Riverfront Park Project. <laughs> There's a so, bullet. Um, I, I think everybody knows by now that we're, we've been working toward applying for this uh, park grant. We have the opportunity to bring in $400,000 of um, state funds to upgrade the park lands um, behind the library here. Um, one of the conditions of these park funds, and we will be able to apply in subsequent years too, um, but one of the conditions is that the land needs to be um, put into conservation restriction in yep. perpetuity. Okay. Um, if they're going to fund a park, they want to know that it's going to stay a park. Right, it's not going to be. Putting funds into it. So okay. um, just wanted to. Um, run that by you all and you know see if you have any uh, initial thoughts about it would be the the lots uh, you know behind the library and the town offices here that's what i was going to ask you, which you know for for folks who are watching like which parts it would be yeah now the, this this property the whole thing is about nine and a half acres but there are already some property lines there's several parcels that are put together so um part of our master plan includes um improving parking um, around the town offices we wouldn't want um the the, the town office itself to get put into a, a 
you know, restriction. restriction right. So this lot that the town offices are on, we wouldn't include now. And we've talked about um, doing a, um, changing the lot line so we can um, separate out the town offices and the library, and then but but still be able to fund the work that we want to do um, for uh, to improve the parking. But that'll come later on. For for this year, it would be there's a there's a there's a line kind of behind where the um, the parking spots are here be, behind the town offices. There's a, and I'm sorry I didn't bring a drawing, okay. but it would be the lots behind I there know. that we're talking about. It, it's kind of similar to when you put a prop, like if somebody's got a farm and they put it in an APR, they'll typically leave the house and a certain footprint around it out of right. the APR in right. that sense. So. Yeah, we tried yeah. to find out if we could kind of just put a parcel into restriction, but um, they said no, they, they, they prefer for It's probably us. cleaner, I would yeah. think. <coughs> that wouldn't be that big of a deal, um, but it just will take some time to get a survey. And all that. So, um, we won't include that in our phase one uh, uh -huh. that we'd we'll be applying for this year. But I, I got an email from Rock said that we should really think about this because he said it, he thought it might be a, a what small, did he say? Dowry a small dowry for a long dowry marriage. For a long marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I well, like that That's analogy. That's an interesting way to put it. Okay. Yeah. So I just wanted to kind of open the conversation and see if there are any concerns about that or, you know. Yeah. I think in the same correspondence, the term perpetuity is a long time was used. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Forever is a long. Forever. It's a long it marriage. can be it can be reversed, but only through an act of legislation. Yeah, right. It, it just it's just like an APR where yes. you you can reverse it technically, yes. but the town and the legislature have to approve it typically. Right. Yeah. Okay. And sir, so that uh, is upon a successful um, application grant Correct. in the, in the park format. Correct. In the PARC format. Yeah. Okay. And how critical, if I could, Mr. Chair, how critical is, are those park revenues to the to the actual project? We can't do it without them. Okay. And the scale? Million dollars, seven hundred thousand dollars. The whole project, the whole master plan right now is about two million dollars. Okay. And um, we, the park will give us sixty-eight uh, um, percent percentage match. Yep. Yeah, so, and so we could match that with CPA funds. This town will be paying 16 cents on the dollar mm -hmm. for this, um, these upgrades. But we can, so it's a good deal. Um, but we can't, there's, a, there's one other possibility for funding, which is uh, um, these block grants. Mm -hmm. And who knows, I don't know what's going to be happening. They're not looking that, really good right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So and, and you're looking at phasing it in, as I recall, too, phasing. right? So it's not like it's all happening at once, no, monetarily and physically. We do a, um, a $588,000 for phase one, and roughly what we'll aim for. That's because that's the max we can get for a park grant. And mm -hmm. we're, we're in a very good position to get one. We have a lot of, uh, you know, checks that we qualify in a lot of ways. Okay. Um, so, so if we could get 400, we need to match that with 188. Okay. And that can be CPA funds. Or a really big bake sale or yeah. something <laughs> right. along those lines, right? Right, or yeah. donations. Donations, or exactly. Yes. Right. Um, unfortunately, uh, <clears throat> in-kind donations don't count. Um, uh, um, labor, volunteer labor doesn't That's count. Right. Um, you know, materials that are donated don't count. It's got to be actual. Actual. Mm -hmm. I think that the big challenge, like any, like even with what we have now, will be is the ongoing maintenance. That'll be one of the big things that we'll have to figure out. I think right from the get go is you know how we're gonna, well, how we're gonna maintain it and pay to maintain it and everything. But I think it'll be a good asset. Yeah. <clears throat> Based on if every you know, I, I knew you guys were here that time and you showed the plans, but. It, um, at some point, it may be, it'd be nice to get a small copy of that so that we can get it up on the website so that people can oh, okay. see what we're, you know, what we're talking about. Because okay. um, that, I mean, that might be nice, especially, yeah. um, I don't know if we can, but if we could get a colored version, that'd be yeah, awesome. Yeah, we could. Um, yeah. We're, we're having a
having our public forum on Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, that's and, right. And um, Carlos will have uh, <coughs> color versions then, and we could um, get a version to get that up on the website. It's Wednesday at seven o'clock here, seven right? Seven o'clock so right here. For everybody, got to get up and plug it, you know. So. <laughs> yeah. But that that'll be good because people get to come and see and ask questions and see what we're talking about. I mean, yeah. No, I, I just think uh, I think your your point about paying was spot on. Um, as we've seen, uh, passing overrides is very difficult in the town, mm. so we have to be have to have a way to fund um, something new. Right. So if you're if we're going to have either through users fees or whatever it is, but exactly. Um, is it would be a shame to do it and then have it fall apart, you know, and not be able to take care of it. It, it would not, you know, it would not. Absolutely. Did the, did the maintenance fund survive the, the cuts? So far. So far. <laughs> yes, so far. Good, that'll, yeah. that'll be a big help. <clears throat> but yeah, you're right. That's, it's a very important. Well, if, if we don't, if we can't, if we don't have, and, and I would say that that has to be part of the com committee's presentation, is how, how are you going to main, how are you going to maintain the park? It's, it's nice to say it's going to cost sixteen thousand dollars a year, but you have to understand where that sixteen thousand dollars a year is coming from. Right. And I just don't think you can say it's going to be um, made up from the tax, the tax base. Not not right now. Or whatever the number is, six thousand six. I'm just using sixteen. Right. Seven. Just an example. Right. It's just a concept. Correct. <clears throat> Excuse me. But that's good. So. All right. Okay, and, and any concerns about the conservation? Not at the moment. Uh, Not at first blush for me personally. Yeah, especially if it's limited to the, the, the park. Right. You know, the park lands in and of itself. Yeah. Okay. I mean, conceptually, it sounds fine. I wanted to give you guys a heads up about a couple other things. Mm. Um, one is that we have a fantastic opportunity to enter into a partnership with U.S. Fish and Wildlife who have offered to come in and help us um, clear out the invasive species along the river bank here um, and, um, and replant with uh, native species and pollinators, very healthy plants. Um, and I just wanted to, they have a request or a, a, a requirement to do that, just that the town agrees that we won't mess up what they do for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> what if they do it wrong? <laughs> yeah. They just don't want it to be all ripped out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they're just meddling they with their stuff. They want to know that, that what they do yeah. will last for at least 10 years. So we're going to be coming to you with a, you know, a, a very short um, agreement. Mm. Um, Pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah. Just saying that. It's very wise on your part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, any, well, we're really excited, yeah. and, it, and that's going to help our chances with the yeah, well, grant to have a partnership with both the state and the the U.S. government. Thanks, good science guys. Yes. Project. It's, I would it's agree. Pretty yeah. great. Hmm. Um, and then one other thing is that um, we're starting initiating this branding and wayfinding project. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We had we had an initial meeting with a consultant. The, we, we won a, a Massachusetts Downtown Initiative grant, um, which is funding a, a consultant um, who's coming in from Boston. He's worked with lots of other towns around the state. He did Amherst, he did Greenfield, and it's, it's a, a project to um, come up with, um, you know, signage and um, uh, just a whole set of branding for the town. Um, and uh, they looked they looked really nice what he's done for other towns. He finds a motif, like a visual motif that represents the town, and he really works with the community members to um, you know come up with something that people agree on. So we're looking to um, put together an ad hoc committee um, just to work on this project over the next year. If, if you guys you may want to talk too to um I think the COG and a couple other groups who've been putting up a lot of the signage in the area uh -huh. um, with the scenic byways and things like that right. too, maybe maybe to kind of tie that thread together. Yeah. 
I don't, I'll avoid making any rebranding jokes for those of us who've been through innumerable corporate rebrandings. <laughs> but it's a, it, it makes sense from a, and especially if you're trying to tie it to um, tourism, and right. you know, and things like that. And we're trying to look at you know things like eco tourism and agro tourism and all of that. So exactly. But you know, linking that in because you, and if you've seen a lot of the new signs that they've been putting out around, actually around not just here but all all throughout the valley. Which has been, I think, a, a good help for people coming to visit the area and everything. So, Sarah, when you when you do the uh, the walk with the with the government, uh -huh. were they looking at doing any type of overlook of the uh, of the water as well? Yeah, that's the, in the master plan that Carlos has done. It's a beautiful um, overlook. Um, I, I'm just because I'm just amazed at how many, and Peter probably could verify this. The people that stop at uh, that new one there. Um, yep. it, 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 it's amazing. I mean, there's people there all the time out sitting on those Where? benches looking yep. the overlook on the... Just up north, uh, just heading turn straight off, that way. Turn off on, oh, okay. uh, on 47. I, I, there's yeah, people there yeah. all the time. And, 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 they're, and they always... I mean, there's peak cars from Connecticut, Mass, New, New York, Vermont, you name it. There's cars there, all, I mean pretty much all the time so yeah. I mean there's there's a need um, yeah <clears throat> and for that. Um, Richard and Linda Lopak and I went to scout uh, there's a 1.1 mile ADA accessible trail um, in Hadley it's Fort River mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Preserve mm -hmm. and um, we it's a beautiful trail I had, I had no idea there's this huge wildlife National Wildlife Preserve there behind the mall. Part of the string of yes. the Silvio Conte Preserve. Yes, Silvio yeah. Conte. Yeah. So, um, and, and <clears throat> the, you're walking along the trail, they have lots of these decks of overlooks. I've seen pictures of it, I haven't been to it. They're but. really nice, you know, and it, it makes such a difference <clears throat> to have that spot where you can, you know, walk out and it's, it's kind of a, you know, it's a viewing spot and I've, right. it's just, it's a really, important feature of a trail so uh, it, it made me appreciate how worthwhile that mm -hmm. is and it'll we have such a fantastic view there. i was just going to say it's a it's a very scenic part of the valley so because yeah. <clears throat> we can even do classes there i've been talking with the mm. Catherine um at the library about um that's true um, pro incorporating the trail into library programs and um She's very enthusiastic about that. She wants to do boating workshops and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes. the library's going to be renting out canoes pretty soon, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes. Yep. <laughs> but that's good. And you could probably even talk to like the Hitchcock Center or something like that, because yeah. I'm sure they'd like to come down and do some workshops yeah, or something. Yeah. So. Especially like right along the river there. Right. That's be very nice. Yeah, it's really mm -hmm. exciting. It's great. All right. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks so much, yeah. Sarah. <clears throat> and hopefully you'll have a packed house on Wednesday. <laughs> I hope so. All right. Thank All right. Thanks. Okay. George, come on down. This is our annual spring right where we talk about roads and what we're fixing and everything. Yeah. All right. What do you got? of the new highway guy. Ah. Oh, yes, our full-time position. Yep. All right. Want to do that one first? Sure. Oh, well. All right. Yeah, the way. All right. Who's our? Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, this is to the Board of Selectmen from the Highway Superintendent, George Emery. Uh, I would like to recommend Frederick Kornowski, Jr. for the full-time position as a driver laborer for the Town of Sunderland Highway Department. I also recommend his starting rate to be $19 per hour. I believe filling this position with Mr. Kornowski will bring our highway department to a higher level of service for the town of Sunderland. He's obtained CDL Class A, tanker endorsement, DOT cards, hoisting, etc. 22 years experience with all states asphalt and three years experience with HC Cocot. Right. Motion. All second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Right. Three to zero on the appointment. So in this year's agenda for projects to be done, Park Road is a section in the middle of it. Uh, 
uh, right around Williams's property. Mm -hmm. and on that hill section where the water runs across yeah. the road, yeah. we're gonna mm -hmm. do a full depth reclamation through there to reshape the road so we can get the water to run on both sides of the where the two swales are mm -hmm. on that part of the road. Um, and extend the swale up to meet his driveway so when the water comes out of that field, it'll run down the swale instead of across the road and cause ice problems and yeah, all other stuff. Winter. So that's one of the projects and then we'll shim some of it and then oil and stone over the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, East Plum Tree. So, so George, back on Park Road, yep. do you read that uh, email that we received from one of the residents up there? Yes, and a lot of the, br the brush he's talking about down by the pond, we are going to trim that so you can see across the pond, so yeah. you can see coming down the hill for that. A better line of sight for Yeah, yeah so yeah. you can have that where that skinny section is around the pond, there where the two guardrails are. So we'll cut some more brush back there so you can see across, mm -hmm. so you can see up the hill and traffic coming down it. Um, generally, we don't paint lines on all those back roads. I mean, if you want to on that line, on, on that, that road, we could after we do you know the repaving re and stuff of it um, I don't see line painting on those back roads because it's just it's a lot of extra money that the town really doesn't have and I don't use chapter 90 for line painting I use that out of our regular budget so it maybe uh, maybe start like you say maybe start with the uh, cutting and, and again I don't I don't know if my experience is going north on 47 the line doesn't stop cars from crossing <laughs> no. it's true <laughs> it's sad no, to say just a, just a guideline yeah um, <laughs> a suggestion but yeah we're going to cut that brush back so you can see make it a lot better and okay. keep all the brush cleared back and stuff. I, I i appreciate <clears throat> the, the email though i mean mm -hmm. i think it, it had it had uh, voice concerns I, I i think we had concern Sometimes people were talking about the color of the the, the railings also. Mm -hmm. I think the ra well, I I think those they were that that they were meant to do that. They were supposed to rust. They were supposed to rust that color. So yeah, make them look gold. And a lot of a lot of the places that I know in Montague when they did old Greenfield Road over and Greenfield Road, they put in guardrail that looks rusty. Yeah, right. Because they want it bold looking instead of yeah. shiny bright. And I think that's what they did when they did that. It was the same thing. They yeah. didn't want. They didn't want newer guardrails up there, the shiny guardrails. They wanted the more the rustic. Rustic look, yeah. I think it's just like some of the light poles, look at some of the light poles. Yep. They rust, and then that, that uh, coating of rust then forms mm -hmm. a protectorate layer that yep. lasts forever. So. It does. And I know in that email he was suggesting a stop sign or something that uh, if you're coming uh, south on North Silver, you get to Garage Road where you can either go left up the top side of mm -hmm. North Silver or go down towards Garage Road. Yep. He was talking about some kind of a stop sign at that intersection. That's going to take a lot more doing than just putting a stop sign up there. We're going to have to probably look into maybe some engineering or, or uh, some kind of a study or something. Can, can you ask? Can you uh, work with the chief on that, George? Uh, I was just yeah. going to say, yeah. Just, uh, just ask the uh, chief. But chief, chief no. Thinks. Chief says he's very... Uh, abreast of current vehicular <laughs> license <laughs> laws. Yeah, I'll talk to him about that. See, see, yeah. but but I understand what he's saying. It's a tricky spot. Yeah, it is a tricky spot. Yeah, um, and I know by cutting the trees and everything down, you guys do a good job keeping that brush down. Yeah, and it helps. It's better than it was before. But I understand it. So it is still a concern. Yeah, okay. we'll look at that some more. I'm guessing brush is going to be a little bit more of a problem with all the rain we've had this year compared to last yeah, year. Yeah, we started, stuff's going to we started grow a lot outside more. mowing and doing some brush hog and yeah. getting that going, but we've been having a little bit of issues with the 1970 tractor, so it seems like it's been breaking down more than we've been using it, so yeah. long lines and stuff like that, so. But we're getting there. Um, Torrey Road. That's on a list of, to be oiled and stoned and shimmed. There's a few sections through there that just need a new, you know, little coating of asphalt on top of it and then we'll oil and stone it with 10% rubber like we usually do. Okay. Um, East Plum Tree, there's some sections through there. I was talking to the Allstate or the um, Warner Brother guy that we might actually, there's a section from the 116 up to about the gravel pit. We might put a, a layer of binder in there. Hmm. And then oil and stove over, over the top of it because the truck tires are pushing it. Yeah. 
So I think he, we were thinking that the binder would help a little bit better, give it a, that it's a bigger stone, you know, have a much better base that way, and hmm. won't push as much, hopefully. A little less erosion and everything. Yeah, so hmm. that's the plan on that one. Um, gun cross road, we're thinking about just uh, shimming the huge wheel ruts in it because it's really hard to pay or plow that road. Mm -hmm. um, you ride the ground. You, you ride on the top of the yeah. ground, and the wheel ruts are full of snow still. So I'm just going to shim that just to dress it up to make it make it nice and flat again, so it's easier to maintain it. Um, roads. And the, the small section of reservation road from where the blacktop ends to just past the house before it drops down the hill to Cranberry, we might pave that little section through there Stretch. just because it's it's tough with the bigger trucks getting down there. A lot of times I'll have to send a small truck up there to mm -hmm. take care of it because we can't get the big truck down there. Well, we can get it down there, but it's pretty hard getting it get back, back up. up. Yeah. So being paved, I think it'll be a lot easier to keep it clean and it doesn't freeze as fast. Which road, George? Other. Reservation. Yeah. Then on the list, heading 47, heading south, around Old Amherst, about a mile and a half. We're going to um, do a milling and then an overlay. Hmm. That probably won't get done until next, like May, June. So that'll be on that list. We're going to try to incorporate that into the um, oh, complete streets. The complete project. streets work. That sidewalk, so we can do that all at the same time. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, so get all done together. Yeah, and if <clears throat> that's not ready yet, the complete streets part of it's not ready. We will not do the other part until that's ready, so we can do it all at one, one time, so we don't have to rip up anything that we've done. <clears throat> and then do you have like general like pothole repair for the summer? Yeah, plans, we or? did. We did some pothole patching on uh, 47 North yep. between raindrops. Um, <laughs> we got some more to do. We got a bunch up on North Silver. We got to take care of and stuff like that. But we're waiting for some dry weather and getting enough help to do it. So pretty hard to patch with two people. I think when we did 47, I had the two summer help kids and two trucks, so one in the back. And it was pretty busy the day we did it. But it was the rain was coming, and I needed to get it done that morning because I wanted to get it done. So um, so it helps having enough people so you can have enough vehicles to. Make sure the traffic's not bugging you too much. Right. I do usually go and mark them ahead of time. Sometimes. I've seen marks and stuff. Yeah, or I'll make a list, and that way I know right where to go okay. when, we, when we do it. Mm -hmm. um, we got some catch basins that need to be repaired. Um, out in the parking lot here at the library, there's a couple sections where it's starting to get kind of broken up around the basins and yep. stuff, so we might cut those sections out and repave and yep. grade so the yep. water does make it to the basins instead of puddling around them. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, there's one in the police parking lot that needs to be cut out and redone. I think a couple blocks in there fell out of it and there was a small hole starting, so mm -hmm. we'll patch that one. Um, tree trimming, a bunch of that to do this year. Roadside mowing, all, all that stuff. We got, we got, we're a little bit behind this year, being that we were short help for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're getting it. <coughs> Hubbard Hill Road. Hubbard Hill Road will be, will be brush hog back, and then we're going to use the mo roadside mower to chew it back some more because it's getting kind of narrow again. Yeah. yeah. I, I know. I noticed. It looks like. Uh, do you now? At one time. Leverett, Leverett was going to uh, use their grader. They felt they, uh, that goes back many years where they borrowed a, a truck and they never yeah. went through there. But uh, it's, It was graded this year in the spring. I had uh, hired Warner Brothers with their grader to come in. They graded Reservation, uh, Hubbard Hill, and East Plum Tree. East Plum Tree? Yep, they, they're all graded this spring. So. Okay. <laughs> Well, that rain's probably not going to help them, you know. And the new truck should be here maybe this week or next this week. Ah. I'm just waiting to hear uh, how about our cross? How about our crossroad? The cross. Uh, patrol. 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 That was another question I was going to have for you guys. Ah. Tonight. A lot of potholes on that. That went by tonight. What do we? What do we? Do we want to spend a lot of money on that road, or do we want to just keep patching it? Really. I don't think it's been, it was, last time it was oil and stone, I believe, was in the early 2000s, like real early. 
uh, well, I, I guess I would ask, how's it being used? It's it's basically being used as a cars a day. Just a quick for some cars shortcut. I try to stay off it with the big trucks. We don't go on it hardly ever with the big trucks. Um, you might see a car occasionally scooting across it. And the farmers, farmers are always using it. They got their tractors parked on the sides or their trucks when they're doing their work in the fields. There, it's about all I ever see on it, really. See, I, I wouldn't mind if we if we milled, you know, milled it right down to dirt and, and made a nice just let the dirt, dirt road. Well, or, a dirt road is easier to to maintain, I think, isn't it? Mm, it's costly over the years to keep maintaining a dirt road compared to a paved road. I okay. Mean, you'll get more life out of a paved road than you will. I mean, a dirt obviously won't ever go bad, but you're constantly grading it and yeah, dragging treating it, it. Or treating it or doing something to it. Because the question is just for the traffic. The I mean, I can see, I thought about doing it in front of the house from uh, Hadley Road to the last house. I can't remember the gentleman's name or the people that owned the last house there, mm -hmm. but Tobacco Barn. Mm -hmm. Redoing that section, making that nice because it does need to be done. Well, it seems like the section parts. from Hadley Road to the first to the corner is the worst, right? Hadley Road all the way to the first house. Yeah, that's the worst. Yep. To pave that maybe and then maybe look at dirt for the rest there. Mm -hmm. No, that section that we're talking about is through the field. Is it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no houses on it, except for the very end of it on 47. Have, have, you, rode, have, have you rode, rid, ridden on it lately? I haven't been on it in a while. Scott? No. Uh, not in the last couple of weeks, but uh, so, so maybe maybe let's let's, let's, let's take a look at it. And, and we it's tough to it. see what's there now because there's so many puddles on it right now. Yeah. Well, if you go faster, though, <laughs> if you go over 20 <laughs> miles an hour, you know what's there, George. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's why I went through there about 15. Yeah, I went through it yesterday. I drove through. Okay. It. I'll take a little spin through there this week. Yeah, check it out. Take your bicycle. Last year, I think we put four or five thousand, or four or five tons of blacktop on it. Pit patch by hand. Right, I would say you got some pretty deep, you got some pretty, you got craters. Yeah, and that's just from winter time and yeah. the spring. Well, I agree. All right, mm -hmm. let me take a look at that. Yeah. Okay. I'll get a price from Warner Brothers and see what they what it will cost to grade it or do a full depth and chew it all up and then put a base coat on it at least. These make it uniform and Get a couple of years out of that. Yeah, yeah and then you can oil and stone it in a couple of years if you had to. Okay. That makes Great. sense. All right. Any other comments or anything? Yeah, yeah. we're good. All right. Mini split? Yep. Do you have a mini split coming? Uh, yeah, I'll first of the year. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you a call. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. We have a, some um, questions. Are you still doing any crack sealing these days, or is that no longer done? No, we've been doing crack sealing. We did a bunch last year. Okay, good. I didn't, I didn't quite understand what you plan on doing 47 going south, but there are a lot of places along there that look like they could have used crack sealing some time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess maybe you're going to make that not necessary by stripping the whole thing. I'm not, again, I didn't follow all that, but I know that on, on uh, uh, up on, on North Main past 47 where the new pavement was put down several years ago, something like that, in two different stages, you're already starting to get cracks. That was cracks two years ago. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I mean, is it an ongoing process or No, you, you don't have to crack seal every year, no. Not on the same stuff. It lasts, it's supposed to last for a while. a few years, right, usually it at least. It seemed to me like they stopped it, you know, they're going to have for that possibility. Um, and my other question, which I don't think this is a good answer, plan for doing something about North Main up to Claybrook is just on hold for another three, four years? No, so we're, um, that's it. What are we, it's, what's it's your plan now? now. Yeah. Uh, I want to say 20, I think it was 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. It's yeah, 20, so 2020. 20, 20. Yep. They keep, they keep bumping it. Yeah. It was 2018, now it's 2020. Right. Depends on up funding. Yeah. Special. Yep. So keeping our fingers crossed that it won't go past 2020. And in the meantime, it's just Keep patching it. What it is. Yeah, right. We'll just patch it as we can. And I mean, I talked to Tom about this after a meeting when you all had broken up already, but I and a whole lot of other people ride bikes on there. Mm. I know and there's a lot of bike riding. It's yeah. It's just, you know, it's just not at all safe. But, you know, I mean, most people, 
I mean, the people driving cars, people who have a sense of living in town or just, you know, regular, they're incredibly courteous. Uh, the trucks are another matter. Uh, even the yeah. school buses don't give you any room. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no place to go, you know. And, and I don't know, if I had an answer here, I'd be proposing it, you know, other than just, well, because you got to take a lot of money to fix it. But, um, you know, I keep my fingers crossed that nothing bad happens there in the meantime. And I don't know if there's anything else that you can do to, to make it less dangerous. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're right. It's a it's a quandary, and I, I I've ridden my bike a number of times up that way, up towards like the book mill and everything. It's it's an important connector for people going down um, the, main the uh, Falls between. Road and the Montague. Only, the only road in that stretch between you know here and then over to Route 63. Right, right. For going north south. <clears throat> I mean, maybe we could talk to the police department about you know doing some more. Well, they're using 63 right, right now. Right. Yeah, that's true, yeah. right? Because it don't work on 63, so there's probably going to be a little more traffic. It's not like saying if you want to get down along the river here, great, take a detour over to 63 and come, come back. back right? Yeah, right. Right. You know, I mean, that's not really realistic. Good. Yeah. That's uh, Peter, it's from, but, from, from, the, from 47 up to again? all the way from the stretch from here to Claybrook? From, from here to Claybrook is yeah. a stretch. It's a disaster. Yeah. yeah. And it's a disaster. And go, you really ought to just go stand there because, you know, when the road was built, there was only a shoulder about this much. Right, it's okay, narrow. Kind of like there. Yeah. there ain't even that now because it's all corroded yep. in most of the places. So you're already out. And then it seems like most of the damage is in the three, four feet on the, you know, on the outside of the road. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, yeah, it's actually it safe for, you know, you actually feel secure if you're pecking right down the middle of the damn lane. Right. You know, but that doesn't work. No. And, hmm. and where you're sort of, you know, when the trucks come and they push you over there and you're on all this ratty stuff. Sure. I've written in the, the board the last couple of years trying to get, you know, more potholes fixed and fixed sooner in the spring just because, you know, the longer it's bad there, it just it's Just it goes. Yeah, and it, it's tough because the weather doesn't always cooperate. Well, so, I mean, yeah. You know, there are all sorts of issues, but, you know, I would hope you guys can, you know, do whatever can be done to just keep it from being any worse than, than it has to be. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, it's, it's difficult right now because when when the way it was first presented, we would we would be starting construction next year. Mm -hmm. So George started coming down from the Montague Sundown Town Line four years ago. You started five years ago when you first. What's that? Six. Yeah, six right? years ago, six. and and then he he did what you did two three, two or three two different poles two different two different th sections, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden we got in the quay for the uh, the state on the the renovation. That's what that's when we stopped. Because why would we spend right. hundred thousand dollars if if we we're just going to get it back? Unfortunately, um, that's what that's what happens. Now here we are, and I and I personally. I agree with you, Peter, on, on the side, and I don't know if the white lines got pushed out further. They did. They're right on the very edge. When they did, they, the they did, didn't they, George? Yeah. Well, there's still some, they, there's still like, it's breaking about apart this much bit. that's all yeah. breaking up. Right. Right. Yeah. still paid. And, the, and then actually the problem is that, that there have been times when it come along and like you'll get the, the paper come over and there'll be a bit of a drop and so it gets filled in with yeah. the sort of stuff that's, Sort of like the TRG you put on a driveway, but it doesn't seem yeah. quite the same. But guaranteed, if you actually miscalculate slightly and your bike goes just off the edge there, that's the fastest way to lose control because that stuff is like too yeah. soft. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, like, it's like it looks almost like hard pack, but it's not hard. But it's not hard pack. Yeah. And it's better if you just have some hard yeah. pack there and you could at least keep control. But it's like, no, you don't want to go miss by six inches this way, but your trucks aren't leaving you more than a foot or two on this side. Mm -hmm. I, I know because even, even when you walk, when we when we try to walk on 47, it's the same thing because the state put guardrail last time. And they put the guardrails guardrail so damn close. They, they put right. the guardrail so close is that you can't. There's no room, man. Really. You can't walk because if before if they if they were like 18 inches off the road, at least you could get off the road. But now you, you have to stay on the road, right. so it makes it much more difficult. Yeah, I, I wish I was coming with a solution because I understand the fiscal reality of the thing. That I know. Yeah. You know, it's it's a it's a big deal, but but I guess you know the more that because I, you know, I I agree with you because even like on I think to me down down the lower part 
you have more room so when you go up because when you get further up it i think the road Narrows almost up. narrow gets narrower -er. it does yeah. and and it's very it's very difficult the sidewalk stop and 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 so we're talking about making a bike path down here which is great yeah but once you get up there but once you get past uh -huh. once you get past claybrook you're going to end up with the same right. same trouble right so i i don't really i agree i don't don't get me wrong i agree with you i don't know the answer because i it seemed like we kept getting wider and the, and it got less and less room on the side of the road so. so we have to talk to our yeah mass dot friends or something about when they paint i think they went but. from like eight and a half feet to nine feet or nine and a half because i know they went wider yeah and, and just if you don't mind me asking on what you were saying about 47 going south i assume south from from the intersection old, from the light old, old amherst south from old amherst down to a mile and a half which is just past about where sparsky's farm stand is not even that far. It's about that past. Uh, you know that bend, maybe by Riverland Farm. Around there? Just past um, Patrol Across. And south, yeah. and and, okay. and from the light down to Old Amherst is going to just. Is that waiting for 2020 also? That's not part no, of the project. That's not part of the project. That's not part of the project. <clears throat> that section was done. I was just going to say that was. I was here. It's not that old. That's why I wasn't going to do it. No, because that was torn Where's up. That? From the lights to South Main to uh, Old Amherst. How many years ago was that? Done? It's probably more than I think, but I remember when that was ripped right down to the dirt and wow. completely redone. The <clears throat> George, I, I would highly recommend next time if we go to touch that road that we look at someone doing some survey work on it so that we get the right grade. The drive-by tracks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it's going to have to be mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. And all the basins will have to be lowered. A lot. You just take out the top course. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Put it right back down. And I, and I don't know how. Look for the fresh, relatively fresh grout. And, and I think somebody, <laughs> somebody, some along along the way missed that yeah. totally. So I, I don't. But I agree with you. And someone out there is going to say bicycles have to obey the the laws. I will agree with that. Yeah. But cars yeah. have to understand that the bicycle has a right to be on the road. Right. So if the bicycle's in the road. And they're going slow. You need to slow down until you can safely pass the bicycle. You just can't force the bicycle off right. the road. And, I, and, I, and I'd be the first one to say that there are an incredible number of really considerate drivers who go out of their way. Ninety-nine point nine. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's just, I, I mean, I really the only in a way the only problem is it makes you think that the whole hundred percent could be like that, and then the one bad egg right. comes along. Right. So then you're in trouble. trouble. Most everybody I see here is just incredibly considerate and, and it's, it's really appreciated and, and um, I'm just more concerned about what like, we don't have a bad accident. That's, that's really and I, I accident. would say if, if personally if cars obeyed this even came close to obeyed in the speed limit um, would be a, a major help. Um, even the big trucks though. I, I followed a big truck going home one night, left the lights by the time it hit, before it even hit Claybrook it was doing 50. And that's yeah. a tractor trailer. And I and I understand they take they, they go that way because it, it's it's supposedly shorter, mm -hmm. but if they were going the speed limit, it wouldn't be shorter. No, and and not just on not just on forty seven, but when you get on sixty three also, mm -hmm. if if they're going forty where they're supposed where it's marked as forty, yep. they they would it would take probably longer. But yeah, and we're, we're not going to solve that problem. No, no. anyway, thank you. No. Yeah, but, and, but I I agree with, I, I I do agree with what Peter says. I, I don't I don't know if there's any you know signage that we can put up George a reminder um, share the roads anything that we could do there's already to, a sign up you know bike route I know yeah but <laughs> maybe, maybe we can tie that in somehow with complete streets maybe on the next round or something like that because that's yeah. one good thing about that program that it, it, the, the, the trap of course is we're talking about a relatively short window for something that we're hoping we would we had hoped as it has been said Peter that we, we, would, be, we would be starting here in September yeah. and you know I think the the consensus design has been really really helpful but it, it's nice that it's on paper it'd be much better if it was in the form of something you could use mm -hmm. yeah and I think too I don't know how much farther that will go up if that'll solve 
all of our problems along that. Goes all the way up to but, Claybrook. Yeah. The design's That'll got cover the design's that. got the combination lane up to Claybrook, but that doesn't necessarily that mean other stretch though. That other stretch, and it also doesn't yeah. necessarily mean people who aren't road bikes are going to take off and go onto the combined path. We had the discussion with the engineer. Right. That's that's a that's a more that's a more local traffic, and you get people who are not interested in their bikes when they're on in, in local traffic mode when they want to get to Hadley. Right. They just want to. Or they're going to they're going to Enfield, Connecticut, or they're you know that's not that that's not there's a variety of different kinds of riding as was expressed by the engineer. Yeah. But a better road, absolutely, completely agree. I agree. Anything else, Peter? Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, George. All right. Thanks, George. Thank you, George. Um, hey, hey, George, uh, back on 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 your. Uh, you don't need tanker endorsements, right? That's just something that he has. <laughs> okay, because I was wondering, you don't need a tanker endorsement yet. No, nope. not yet. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's Thank hope you. not. They're changing. They're changing. They changed a couple other things on a Wister's license too. So. Uh, I, I didn't know just because, you know, I was just saying, you know, if you carry calcium oh. as side tanks, you'd probably need to so make you have, or you have to have 1,500 gallons, yeah, 1,500 gallons, right? Certain, yeah. Believe, yeah. All right. A lot of towns have sure. side tanks with calcium on them. They don't have to. Okay. Thank you, George. Have a good night. Have a good night. Let's go do our minutes next, maybe. Before we Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Three to zero on the minutes. And now our exciting... Board of Selectmen updates. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I could, I'd like to uh, express my condolences to the whole family as uh, Kay passed away uh, the other day. Kay um, had had a long history in our town. Um, Kay's family had a long history in our town, has a long history in our town. And I just, I know Mrs. Hool for a long time. Um, growing up, um, one of the many young men that got yelled at by her for various <laughs> things. So. You got yelled at too? No. I mean, Come on. <laughs> but it, you know, it, it, it's one of the things, and I try to express to people about growing up in a, a small town it is like for for many of us that grew up in a small town, um, it started out as Mrs. Hool. It was Mrs. Hool for many, 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 many years because that's how we were introduced to her and that's the way she always was. And even at her insistence that we call her okay. not Mrs. Wool. Um, but to Jimmy and um, his brothers, uh, Kenny and Dougie, and to a sister, I just want to express my condolences. Um, it's tough losing a mom. It is. We'll do a minute of silence for her, I think. That'd be good. Thanks. Um, all our wishes go out to the whole family. Mm, thank you, David. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, hey, Scott? Uh, if, if I could, along the very same theme, uh, mm -hmm. Sunderland has, has uh, passed yet another generation of Whitmores in this, in this past week, mm. where Bill Whitmore up on Falls Road has passed away and is now interned in uh, the North uh, Cemetery. Um, anybody who's been around the town office building or many of the events in town meeting over the years knows knows bill and his his presence in a room and um he can be he could be a picky sweater but had a great smile so if i could offer the same for, for uh, bill and his family and i think one other thing scott if i could add mm -hmm. is that many people in our town town of sunland one of the few towns that have, of our size that have complete coverage of uh um broadband that's and a good point. cable That's TV. Good. You're right. Bill Whitmore, um, back 20 years ago, um, was fighting for that. When everybody else was saying, "What the heck is, <laughs> what the heck is it?" Bill was fighting for that, and and uh, he he um, he was on our on our first really our first telecommunications group, and started out as uh, basically just TV, but and at more. You know, metamorphosed into what it is today. So, I built it a lot of things that most people didn't. But if you have cable TV and internet, and you live in some of the outlying areas, and out and and, and understand outlying what outlying means. Right. 
Silver Lane, yeah. Adley, <laughs> anything off Main all, Street, <laughs> uh, anything anything besides Main Street, right. you were the outlying according mm-hmm. to Comcast. So Bill Bill was fighting for a lot of us before we even knew what he was fighting for. Uh, it's important as we see what's going on all around the western part of the state. So, right. Uh, all right. And uh, I don't have any updates this week. So um, just hopefully folks can turn out if they're interested uh, Wednesday to the. Community Pathways meeting, that'd be nice. And uh, it's actually a really nice plan. It's a, I think it's a good use of looking forward at the use of the space. And unfortunately, um, like unlike a lot of old New England towns, we don't have a distinct center or a common. And our main street was at some point kind of hacked in half by the, the state highway. So this area has kind of become our new town center. So I think a lot of the things that we do to rally around that and make it better will be great <clears throat> so how about the uh, town administrator updates Sherry? Uh, i'm working on quotes for the uh, upgrade for the telephone system and the data cabling project oh yeah that's right so we got that grant right I so, yep, that's good <clears throat> any any other excitement right now um, Last week, I um, presented at the Mass in Motion uh, meeting at the FERCOG for the Complete Streets Project. Sunderland was the nice. first town nice. in Franklin County um, All right. to submit a Complete Streets prioritization plan. So. Nice. Little old Sunderland on yeah. the cutting edge. Look at that. All right. Okay. Um, our next Selectman's meeting will be... Warrant. Oh, that's right. We have a warrant. I forgot about that. Motions. All right. 16th would be awful boring without him. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All right. Let's, let's pull out our long list of motions here. So it looks like we have a total of three, Mr. Chair. And Yes, we do. One is a rescind of a prior article. Would you like me to read it? Sure. Please. sure. Uh, article 1, move that the town vote to amend the vote taken under Article 12 of the April 18, 2017 annual town meeting by reducing from $105,000 to $65,000 the amount transferred from free cash to the anniversary celebration fund for the town of Sunderland's tricentennial celebration. That's relatively straightforward, taking yep. from free cash and applying, essentially, if it passes, more free cash to the operating budget in the next article. Right. I think we talked about that at the last meeting, too, when we were going here with the Finance Committee. So, yep. Yeah, that is pretty straightforward. <clears throat> move, move to recommend. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero. Sherry on that one. All right. Then we have Article yeah. 2. Yeah. Next, we have the, the actual... It's the budget article. Now remember in the budget process, the revised budget process, there was a reduction of $37,000 out of the operating expense request. And then the application of this additional free cash considered less than the 37,000. Remember we, had, we were targeting, uh, we walked out of special town meeting, 63 plus thousand dollars in the hole. Um, in this case here, it's a little, it's a little, we're going to have to pay attention to the phrasing, in particular the moderator. So it says, move the town vote to amend the vote taken under Article 4 of April 8, 28, 2017 annual town meeting, appropriating the total sum of $7,578,569 for the town general and municipal purposes connected therewith for the fiscal year 2018. Now, to me, the part that was tricky is that sentence is a reflection of the original article, and that's important to bear in mind. By reducing the amount raised and appropriated by $37,000 so that the total amount appropriated for the fiscal year 2018 budget shall be $7,514,655, and by reducing appropriations under various lines line items for such purposes and transferring the sum of 26914 from free cash as recommended in the document Town of Sunderland FY 2018 revised budget. So the language is a little different. We don't necessarily, because we're amending an original article, in the yeah. original article where historically we would say 
from, 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 from. Right. This is changing that by essentially two spaces, reduction of request and additional use of free cash. Right. And we'll have a handout accordingly. Right, rather than going through the right. entire piece again. Right. And we discussed the, some of those other reductions last week when we had right. the finance committee. Right. But again, the so. language is gonna be important to bear in mind in the motions, because it, yeah. it took me three times, I got notes here, I'm like, you're like, wait a minute, what is that? What? So anyway. Yeah, it, it is a little quirky right. in that right. sense. Again, because we're amending. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, move right. to include. Uh, move to recommend, I'm sorry. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, three to zero on that one. No. Get an A. Get an A. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. No, okay. We're not fixing it. I'll still say two, my two thing. We're not fixing anything. Yeah. Yep. That is correct. Yep, two to one. So, um, mm -hmm. and, 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 and nothing in the board or no. town administrator or finance committee, but if we have people continue to come and vote no, they have to tell us what they don't want. They have to participate. Because the people that participate tell us that they want the services that are being sure. offered. That's right, and, and and again, so it's it's not it. How how do I say this? I, I want to say this in the best way possible. I'm I'm not you. If it, it, it's your right to vote, no, I respect. And 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 I think over the years, eighteen years, we we've proven that we've never come back right. and challenged the vote that was taken. Right. We we waited a year to vote again, mm -hmm. but we never come back five weeks later and said. Right. We're going to have another override question. Right. We, we, we have not done that. So right. I respect the vote. Mm -hmm. But people, you have to get... You, if you want to make fundamental changes, mm -hmm. um, the, 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 when you go to town meeting, the town meeting is our branch of government that sets what, how the money in the town is being spent. So, so y y you can go to town meeting, and and people go to town meeting vote yes, and now and, and you don't have enough money. People can vote no, and again, I respect that thing, but you're not saying what you don't want. Yeah, we need you. We need you. I'm imploring you to become involved to take part, and that's all I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not saying you're right, wrong, no, no, whatever. I'm just saying you have to be involved to try to to make this thing work. Well, I, I think unlike the federal government, if I may, it, here we are the government. Every single person in this town is part of the government. You can't just point your finger and say, oh, the government did this or the government did that. We are all the government here. And okay. Absolutely. And, and, and I, I that's just, right. It's, it's very easy to, to vote no, but just like you said, then it's like, okay, because a simple matter of reality is costs go up. And if you don't want to pay more, well, that's fine, but then we have to cut things. There's only so much money to go around. Sure. So yeah. if, I, if I could, the reductions mm -hmm. come from things like operating expenses in yep. buildings, come from expenses in the general government line, expenses in the police department, expenses in the highway department, expenses in the library, $12,000 from the elementary school, and we're rolling the dice on benefits and insurance, which we over, which we had overdrawn this year again. Right. So it's a so again, to, to Tom's to Tom's point. Yeah. You know, there's 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 a there's a budget process, and then there's a, there's a mechanism to pay for the budget process. I don't think the board has ever. Certainly, the composition of this board in, in my tenure has never gone forward with something that wasn't fact based. Not opinions, not hairstyles and attitudes, just facts. Yep. Anyway. And, and I would say in, in 18 years, um, we've probably one, one thing in the town that we've added um, that I think is a a success beyond compare is the ambulance. Oh, I would agree. Yeah. Um, I know, I know, now I can't talk as factually about what has transpired in the schools. Have things changed in the schools? Sure, I'm sure we have different 
programs and different things than we did 18 years ago. Matter of fact, I know, I also know that the state and federal government mandates a lot of different things that weren't mandated 18 years ago also. True. But I, I can't even get, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to get into that. But what I'm saying is that when you look, if you look at the town, <laughs> the town of Sunderland is run by three guys in the highway department, five guys in the police department, um, four people in town office, we, plus we got a couple part-timers. We have uh, one person in the wastewater department. We have a uh, uh, part-time building inspector, part-time plumbing inspector, part-time electrical inspector. Most of uh, which live part, in town. Part-time part part -time board of health uh, yeah. sanitation inspectors. Mm -hmm. I, I, and then we have education. So I, 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 I'd love to have the conversation, and 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 somebody could say we spend too much money in the library. Okay, we we spend about one hundred thirty thousand dollars in the library. That's less than what thirty cents a thousand or something like that. Something like that, yeah. Anyways, yep. and, and it, it sort of to tack on to your point too. You know, participating just means more than just. You know, it, just and, voting and alone isn't enough here. participation in the government. I think that's one of the reasons that sometimes we're in the situation we're in is people don't participate. Apathy is one of the greatest dangers in democracy. I agree. Uh, if, I, if I could, Mr. Chair, that feeds like a softball, right? Well, right. I was right. just right. going to say, quote, actually. Get, that's not right, my quote. To right to one of my, um, uh, one of my favorite parts of our meeting. <laughs> so. And I might add that ignorance, fear, and apathy, that's my personal little mantra. Those three are probably the three greatest enemies of democracy. But anyway. If, if, if I could, well, Sherry takes a look at the, at the actual uh, motion there. Um, this is actually a quote from John Adams. Uh, Facts are stubborn things. And whatever may be our wishes, our inclinations, or the dictates of our, of our passions, they cannot alter the state of facts and evidence. John Adams. I was going to read one from Washington, but no, he was, he was he? some loser. Some guy who squabbled with some other guy named Jefferson yeah. once or twice, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard. You know? yeah. We'll yeah. save that for the next week, then. We do want to question three? We have to do question yeah, we have three, to do question yeah. Three. John Adams. <laughs> John Adams. Not Quincy. Nope. No. He, who, who went on to uh, another, another, another illustrious career. Okay. Principal Sorry. Minds right there. Thank you, Scott. Um, we need a name okay. for it's this. It's amazing how things change, but they don't change. change. Yeah, exactly. I should have been a history major. If I could just take three. Yeah. I, I would make so a suggestion that we come up with a name for that segment, like an official name. Actually, <coughs> I, my Washington quote was a little more in the, more in the line of taxation, but I, f I figured facts were important these days. Especially, well, I, could, I could quote Walter Strozik on that one. There you go. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> I like that, actually. I could quote Walter Strozik Walter's on that Walter's good for that. Um, so if I could, uh, Article th um, Article 3 here, the motion is move, th move that the town vote to transfer the sum of 14793 from capital stabilization, purchase and install a fuel pump dispensing system at the highway garage, including all incidental and related expenses. And uh, this, again, has to do with uh, not just fickle temperamental uh, delivery system, but also now card reading and accumulating. It's harder for us to actually track where that stuff is headed. So, so, the, so is, the last time there was a question if this was needed. That's a wait, Sherry was doing some work on that, and we yeah. saw some emails today, uh, and it had to do with Wex, the Wex, Wex card program. What and do you think? What, what are you, what are you, what's your recommendation there, Sherry? Um, I don't have a recommendation, just a couple comments from George. He prefers to have, you know, the pump, but thought maybe that the WEX cards for the police department mm -hmm. and for a backup. Mm -hmm. How, how many gallons of gas do we use a year? That I'm not sure of. I, I could, could, you, could you just look at how many gallons of fuel that we've been dispensing Actually, for the last, right. like, yeah. five years? Because, yep. I mean, I mean this, this, has been, this system has been there for... 20 plus years. Long time. Right. Yep. And we're talking $14,000 for 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know, the question is, is it, does it pay for itself or is it better to go out? Right. And, it, and, it, and if, if we're pumping 20,000 gallons a year, and I don't know if that's fact or fiction, right? And we're saving 30 cents a gallon, right? It's, it's probably money. worth it. So capital versus and the actual price. Exactly. And especially yep. where we can buy the gas in so, both. Yeah. 
So can you do that little? I will. I'll take a look. Thank you. <laughs> so is you want a motion on that? Motion. We should move. We should move to uh, recommend at least for, for discussion. We can, we can always withdraw, withdraw. We can withdraw exactly. that to Tommy if yep. we have to. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. All right. I'll second the motion. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So we got three to zero, two it. to one, and three to zero on those. Um, and also too, when we had our power outage, that proved to be pretty beneficial. Yeah. And Lord knows we'll have more of those. But it is worth exploring the, the bulk purchase. I mean, even yeah. my, my own company does a fleet program. It makes sense. Very, very similar. I, I, I just know as soon as we start, our trucks start driving out of town, I know how many complaints we're going to get. <laughs> you can't go get fuel <laughs> at, in Bourne, Massachusetts. Right. Why, 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 is, why is the Sunderland truck over at the Irving Station in Deerfield uh, or I whatever? Know, I know what happened. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so um, just uh, no, that's okay. Just a real quick reminder: six twelve seventeen. A week from today will be our next selectmen's meeting, and then don't forget on six sixteen seventeen the special town meeting. We'll be talking about all these exciting topics and more. So that's important. That is. It is your democracy. Please participate. Yes. Please do. Uh, a motion to adjourn. Um, I'll make a motion to adjourn. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Three to zero. You get to go. I just happen to see it. We're all set, Scott.